Hey everybody, welcome back to Seas Workout 4. I'm Frodan, I'm joined by Eloise, uh, teammate of Tampa Storm, also recently eliminated in the round of 32. No. Yeah. Best player of Temple Storm. <laughs> the best player of Temple Storm. You, you have the best result so far yes. um, out of any of us. Gara is also in the elimination match, I believe. He's in second place, uh, waiting for the winner of what you saw on screen during that break. I believe it is Olesh versus Sixo. Uh, whoever went that plays Gara. So Gara could outperform you. But uh, oh, maybe, we maybe. Will we'll see. see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. You came pretty close uh, to advancing, but just a little bit short. Well, we're winding. We're winding down day number one here in uh, Krefeld, Germany. It's been a long day so far. We apologize about all the delays. We started late. Uh, we're going very late. It's already past midnight. Half past midnight. Uh, are you feeling okay? Are you adjusted to the jet lag? Uh, it's like morning in China. No problem. Yeah, but you were in the U.S. Um, oh. prior to being here, so oh. you're at BlizzCon, right? Really? Yeah. Um, this is going to be a problem. We actually need to switch headsets. We'll, we'll probably to do that later because you see how it's crossing here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what, what we're going to happen is on stream, we're going to have Surrender versus Dan Sivka. This is the winner's match of Group D. Uh, I'm looking at the bracket right here. Uh, you can go ahead to my. Uh, actually, we're just going to go straight into the game. Yeah, we don't want to waste time, I guess. I was going to show the brackets, but I guess we're just going to go into game number one. It's Mage versus Hunter. Tempo Mage versus Hunter. People said that Tempo Mage was bad, uh, and yet Stan Sifka is bringing it. Why, why do you think that is? Um, because Jab, Jab used Tempo Mage to lose two games in BlizzCon qualifier. To no. <laughs> lose two games? Wow. Mm. Get wrecked. That is how good Tempo Mage is. Yeah. Uh, this is where we're playing. Uh, Sansifka won his match versus Toyota, and then surrender. Sansifka will play. Toyota versus Orange is happening off stream, by the way, uh, because we want, in the interest of time, we want to finish very soon. Uh, and then we're going to have the final match of whoever wins this versus whoever uh, wins. Are we going to finish before 4 a.m.? Uh, I mean, with Sansifka playing, that is a possibility we don't. Um, however. Oh. You know, we we definitely will have some cool games. I mean, Toyota playing that Dread Steve deck. What did you think about that? That was pretty crazy, right? Yes. Mm. Mm. Why? Why? why yes. Is, you, you sound very unimpressed by it. You don't like the Dread Steve uh, deck. Uh, uh, the game has already started. <laughs> let's let's look at this game. All right. Very uh, exciting tempo match. All right. So unstable portal. It's going to pull a minion. That is a Siege Engine, I believe. That card gains New plus one attack per armor you gained. New expansion. Did you know that? M maybe know a little bit. Ah. It's a new mech card. So if you had mech synergies, like if it was a mech deck, like a Goblin Blast Mage and whatnot, oh. you would benefit from it. Oh, thank you for teaching me for <laughs> that. But he's playing Great regular. Knowledge. He's playing regular Tempo Mage. Um, with some stuff like Spell Slinger and the Mechanical Yeti, really give it some mm. synergy with the Flame Waker. Yes, the new cards that come from the Unstable Portal give mm. him a very good tempo. Yeah, so this is uh, really powerful to try and get an early Mana Worm, control the state of the board. Uh, Animal Companion here, mm -hmm. if he rolls a Huffer, he'll be a little bit sad. Uh, oh. Just why, a little bit. Why do you do this to him? Do what? Cur curse him by saying if it's Huffer? Yeah. But it's always Huffer. And you said it three times. <laughs> That's right. Be careful. Huffer, Huffer, Huffer. You are scamming him. Huffer, Huffer. What is this? I didn't want Huffer. <laughs> it's rigged. <laughs> well, I guess do you kill the Mana Worm? Otherwise, he can easily gain a lot of opportunities yeah. to just completely destroy you with that Mana Worm. One mana, one mana trade for three mana. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, that Siege Engine is still a pretty powerful tempo play. Um, although now you have the board to develop Flame Waker and then play something yeah. else the following turns. What do you think? I think he can save the Flame Waker for next turn. He don't have to rush. Okay. This turn he can play some big minion to prepare for next turn. Sure. Uh, well, Siege Engine, what's the stats even? I think it's like a 5-5. Five five. Right? Want to bet? No. <laughs> Hey. I will bet you one flick to the forehead if it's a 5-5. What do you I, think? I don't even understand English. You uh, want to okay, bet with okay. me. All right. Well, uh, he's going to play the Flame Waker just because it costs more mana. makes more sense. You have the opportunity mm. to play Arcane Intellect and Flame Cannon. Yes. 
Uh, Animal Companion here, if it ends up becoming something relevant, like Misha, you can kill off the Flame Waker, because that is a really big threat to everything that you have as Hunter. Mm -hmm. In fact, almost any other animal companion outside of Huffer makes you extremely vulnerable to stuff. You can't deal with the Flame Waker otherwise unless you want to use your kill command. I think either one is good to play, including kill command. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so kill command, but then you just play Leopard Gnome. Ah. Because he's got minion in his hand, he can play for tempo. Or so you think, but then the Siege Engine ends up becoming a really strong minion too. Yeah, but we, we don't... We don't know he have it. So yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying you play around siege engine, but it's just something that ends up being, uh, you know, uh, an another side product of what happens by using these cards this way. Surrender's in a really tough spot. Like I don't blame him for just like yeah. playing the leopard gnome, but like hesitating because the thing just gets pinged off easily. And then if your opponent had another three mana card, it's very easy to just to destroy that. Mm, both class are smart class, so we have to play careful. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, uh, with the Sorcerer's Apprentice draw, you can play Arcane Intellect, and, well, I guess... He can play uh, more greedy. I don't like He that. can play two minions and freeze the 2-1. The yeah, I think, I think I like just pinging here. I think it's okay. You still have Sorcerer's Apprentice for the following turn, yeah. and you can use Arcane Intellect and Flame Cannon and the, uh, the coolant. Oh. oh, okay. Just using, utilizing his mana now. Getting the card draw out of the way. He can save the Sorcerer Apprentice for next turn for more right. spell. This might get punished, depending on, I guess, what is rolled off the Animal Companion. He probably would play the Charge, I think. The Argent Horse Fighter? Yeah, kill the 5-5. Five five. I mean, how much can you really trade, though, before you just start falling behind too much? Because if you if you keep trading as Hunter with this type of hand, this type of deck, are you just going to be in trouble? It's okay. He still have uh, Animal Companion. Yeah, he but... He can Mage Hero Power. Oh, man. But Mage has five cards. And one of them is Arcane Missiles. Oh, this game is just He already really. killed one Flame Waker. You should remember. Yeah, good point. But... Mm. It's like you you can't you're not close enough to use your hunter hero power to drain the rest of the health of your opponent. We will see. We will see. You think you think Hunter has a really big shot to win this game? From now on, he can go full smork now. <laughs> After he's given up almost all of his damage <laughs> with kill commands. Wow. Uh, okay. I don't know. Alex. I don't know. You have no other play except go full smork. Yeah. Well, now now his back's at the wall, but he doesn't get the Misha. Oh, Misha. He didn't say it three times. Misha is a good play. <laughs> it's a good play. Yes, one one out of three good play. <laughs> the <laughs> other two plays are not good. <laughs> yeah, yes so. Wow, he wants to play the freezing trap. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, make explosive trap looks like a freezing trap, and then uh, have Stan Sivka not attack with it. But he's got the perfect counter to it anyways by using the flame cannon on that single target. Margin horse rider. Oh. For more damage, you can make an argument that maybe Surrender needed to weave into Hero Power because he has to be very efficient with his mana next turn. Mm -hmm. He's probably not going to fill out the curve, but we'll see. Mm, he he might think that the charge will stay alive next turn. Or so he thinks. That's the second Flame Waker. That is disaster. Oh man! Wow, turn six, twenty-six house. Good job, Hunter. <laughs> How did I do anything, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, he ends up freezing the Misha, trying to evaluate what the pings do, so maybe he could pick off the Argent Whoa. Horse Rider. Oh. That's a really nice play. Oh, man. That got really awkward real quick. All right, well, now uh, maybe the Explosive Trap's not as bad as it was before. Yeah, do you think he will go face? Or he can sacrifice it into the Azure Drake and play the trap? Yeah, I think the explosive trap almost needs to happen. But if that's the case, then he cannot play the Shredder. It's true. The Maybe. Shredder is uh, really important. But, you know, with the explosive trap in your hand slash deck, you really need to make sure this mage can't just run away with the game. Its board is too strong. Although, he will detect that it is Explosive Trap as soon as he attacks into the 4-2. Mm. So, if he knows it's Explosive Trap, he doesn't have to attack into it. He can just get benefit off of the Flame Wakers plus the spell power and cheaper spells. 
Yeah, very complicated term.、Mm -hmm. It is. Wow, face hunter so complicated. Yeah, <sighs> that that is the, that is the thing. At at the higher levels, some people do take a lot of time to evaluate hate face hunter. Yeah,、players. I think at this point, hunter probably need to survive first. Yeah, I guess so.、Mm -hmm. Ugh, not really loving so it. So painful. I'm not loving it, but I mean, I don't really blame him. I mean, these, these, from this position, everything doesn't look very good. Not to mention that he keeps getting spells from things like mechanical yeti, from the、uh, the clockwork gnome. Clockwork gnome. Yeah, there it is. Yes. El Eloise actually told me that she memorized more names of cars in English than Chinese. Now, like you actually don't know too many TGT cars in Chinese. Is that right? Hmm. But I literally only know like wow, thirty percent of. TGT cars in English. <laughs> Don't worry. Whoa! New card. Oh!、Bang! We banned those cards for round of 32. Oh, where's the battle cry? You rigged the tournament. <laughs> yeah, the jeweled scarab. Wow.、Um, oh. that, I guess that's playable in the first. I haven't actually had a chance to really go deep into the first wing. Is that playable? I'm not sure. I don't know. Either way,、uh, that's funny that it's a beast because it does enable kill command.、Um, what's not funny is that surrender. Even if he had two kill commands, would not be able to finish his opponent off next turn.、Um, if he had three kill commands, he might be able to.、Mm, this one was better. Probably can be the new, the new best target for shredder. <laughs> yeah,、mm. yeah, I guess so. It's an, it's another beast that you can potentially hope for or play around. But the stats are. Pretty abysmal. This、yeah. is an interesting choice too. The Aegis Dark Bane that synergizes with the spare parts、um, and gives a lot of、uh, ability for some board presence. Stan Smith is just going to go for it because what can Hunter do? Even with five minions on board, he can unleash the Hounds. There's nothing really that can happen outside of a Juggler popping、oh. out of the Shredder. A Knife Dragon would have to be popped out of the Shredder, and then you have to have unleash the Hounds. Mm, if the high man comes like two turns ago, maybe he can do something. Yeah, yeah, too much damage.、Mm -hmm. Well,、uh, that's the first game. You know, the mage wins again. This is a deck that people said was not very good, but able to grab a couple wins. Any any、mm. comments on that? At least he's playing against Hunter. <laughs> what's what's wrong with Hunter? Hunter feels like it's a decent pick for the tournament, don't you think? Oh really? Yeah, RD was able to grab a three-zero win with Hunter. Oh, I grabbed like oh three <laughs> with Hunter. Yeah, you lost、uh, three times with Hunter, but <laughs>、uh, you, you to be fair, you even talked to Gara and a few other people, and、uh, some of those games were definitely winnable. So Hunter's not—I don't think Hunter's a really bad pick. Oh, so that is your fault. You cast those tournaments, so that's the reason I lose. It's, it's my fault. You think I'm bad voodoo? Yeah.、Uh, That's right. I I am kind of bad luck in general. Well,、uh, we're gonna start turning it around here with the warrior. This is、uh, a pretty good matchup for the warrior as long as you can get early game weapons. Yeah, and warrior is very easy to deal with mirror entity. So I think it's favored.、Um, warrior is favored. Yeah, but if you don't have weapons, it's one of those things that's like druid with wild growth. It's like、mm -hmm. you you start off very good, and of course you're gonna be very good as the game goes on. But if you don't have those early weapons, you're in trouble.、Mm -hmm. And even if you have those early weapons,、uh, I wonder if Stan Sifka has other things like、uh, mirror image to really stop things like fire war ash from having good impact. Because those are really problematic for weapons as well. It seems like Stan Sifka haven't got a good hand. But he's got a curve. He's got something to do. And if he draws into like early game minions, and unstable portal might get something really nice too. Whoa! Not bad. What did you say? Oh, it wastes snap draw. Do you think he can coin this out this turn? Or if he coin this out this turn, then he will be wrecked by、um, alkalite next turn. Uh, yes.、Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. So probably he want to save the coin for the yeti. And this turn, surrender.、Um, Oh, this is pretty hard. Yeah, equipping a, a war axe.、Mm -hmm. But the thing is, he probably wants like if he didn't have that pilot shredder, he would, he would set us weapon ups because he want to get value before、yes. death bite. Do you think now, he will hit the face? Yeah, now he doesn't kind of he doesn't really have to, right? Because he has shredder. 
He's so, gonna hit face this turn and next turn play Shredder and hit and next next turn equip Despite. But you want to Lothab the following turn, don't you, to secure your board? Maybe, but I think Patron is better play, even if he can only make two Patrons. I guess it depends because with the Mage specifically, you have to see how their board develops. Mm -hmm. um, you want to you want to use his weapon to effectively control the state of the board, like the Yeti that comes out and whatever happens afterwards. So, uh, you know, you want to make sure that Flame Waker doesn't run away with the game. Yeah, so on this point, Stensifka might not play the Yeti anymore. He can play two minions or... Wow. He's going to go for the 50-50 to kill the cool Taskmaster. Wow. How do you think about this? Uh, well, I, I think... I think he just wants to exhaust the Fiery War Axe first and then play the Yeti on the cleanest board possible. That makes a lot of sense. He, I think he wants to save the coin for Antonidas, coin, cloak field. And yes. so he's going to try to just keep that coin for something else. So if you coin Yeti in that scenario, you're just giving up a lot. Plus, there was damage to kill you on board. And um, he's probably thinking that Arcane Missile isn't very good against Warrior because Alkalite and Armorsmith. Yeah, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good point. In fact, Warrior is one of the best, but Patrons too. <laughs> patrons, Armorsmith, Acolyte. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's ping hell. You, don't uh, you are generally helping the Warrior. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, y would you still Shredder here? I think so. Yes. You want to save that Inner Rage for the Grim Patron itself too. Um, as much as you'd like to just have an easy pick-off. Now he can play the... Despite whenever he wants, it's a right. very free choice. It is. Mm -hmm. You don't have to rush. That's right. It's uh, it's it's a f you know Germany is a free country too, Eloise. I know you love you're loving America. Oh, recently. Kappa Pride. <laughs> uh, sure. They're actually much more, very understanding. Well, how do you know? You did research. <laughs> That's right, man. I, I scattered the field. Oh. You have to okay. always be on your toes for that kind of stuff. Oh. Uh, Spell Slinger and Aegis Darkbane. Those are some really fun cards to play with. Yeah. And they have similar stats 3 4. Oh! He positioned his shredder correctly! Ha 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 Okay. Wreckful was kind of going off about like why it really doesn't ever matter. Because he was like talking about statistics. And oh. with, it was like with me and Firebat. And, um, and we're like, no, come on. Like sometimes it actually doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. But even... Huh. <laughs> this is some really wow. weird stuff. It's not like... I don't know how much Power of the Wild really helps, but um, Armorsmith gaining a lot of life and, like, you know, if you, if you like, patron, mm -hmm. clo clone the patron and then Power of the Wild, <laughs> like, what, what oh, happens no. with that? Like, oh, oh, the patrons no. just keep floating the board. And you, <laughs> each oh, patron no. has four health now. And finally, everyone talks about how patron nerf if you mm -hmm. if you make it a four three, mm. right? That's how you nerf patron back in. Oh, four saying. three. Um. Yeah. All right. So our Ar arcane intellect uh, coming down here. That's a full hand. Oh, do you think I play a little bit slow with the scary board? He might. He could coin out. No, he's got like the Antonidas uh, coin for the cloak field. He also has Doctor Boom next turn. Like, that is pretty late. Really he, powerful. You can't coin Doctor Boom this turn. Yeah, but you can also have Antonidas and then Fireball twice the next turn, and then have two Fireballs the following turn guaranteed. So that's twenty-four damage. Right. But you, you have to have the mana to play it. You you will. Assuming, like, you play Antonidas next turn, you coin Cloak Field, the following turn you at least have t uh, Fireballs, two Fireballs, because it's eight mana. Okay, let's and say... And then you Fireball two times afterwards. That's, so what, yeah. what if what if the Warrior spam the board this turn? Then oh, yeah. do you think he's got the time to kill him? I don't think so. He needs one turn to prepare for damage and two turn to burst the damage, right? Yeah, and then you're always worried about um, Gromash, for example. Mm -hmm. But th this is this is what we're talking about, man. The power of the wild. Whoa. That, that wombo combo. Sansif is not going to even be expecting this at all. Whoa. Wow. That's pretty insane. This is the combination of new card and patron. Token warrior, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
gosh. Thanks, Densifica, for giving us this good combo. That, that was pretty sick. Spellslinger is a really f interesting, fun card sometimes. Okay, now make your fireball now. <laughs> well, obviously not now, but that's that's talking about what he wanted to do. Um, if you... Okay. Oh, jeez, what do you even do here? He cannot even play the de Death Spine. Uh, is it called Death Spine? Death Spine? Black Band. Huh? Eddie's black man. The, the three. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Eddie's black Yeah. Man. If if he didn't. Because it hits a four four. And yeah. Drops his <laughs> I, I remember it hit for three, right? Yeah. And yeah. the patron is four health. <laughs> That's right. He he played it around it perfectly. Yeah. Do you even have room to do anything besides be defensive? Maybe you still Antonitis and then you just fireball defensively next turn. Mm, he will die in two turns. He won't have enough time. Th but the thing is, Antonitis can help clean, so you uh, fireball twice. And then the problem is, though, is what if he creates more patrons <laughs> next turn? Like he draws Whirlwind, and then all of a sudden all, it's a full board. Well, you don't actually want a full board. Let's with say if last turn he played Dr. Boom, well, he helped the board. I think he will help yeah, a little course. bit. Yeah. Although the, the boom bots and the patrons, it's always hard to say. Mm, he probably played a little bit slow, I think. Yeah. The one thing that he knows for sure is that his opponent doesn't have Flame Strike. If he had Flame Strike, he would have been an instant call. And now he can just somewhat slow play it. And I think uh, in early game, he's even hold on to the snap draw. Yeah, the mm. snap draw, yeah. He could play it like one or one turn early. But if he played the snap draw earlier, what what would that have created? Is that just like better at, board at, tempo? At least the uh, warrior cannot kill it, and it can stay on board for at least two turns. It can trade something, trade or hit face or anything, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Play it a little bit slow. He probably, I don't know if he's thinking about um, the warrior have bad hand or something. Oh my god, Alder Peacekeeper. Does that help him Does that stay, help him stay alive here? Uh, you Frostbolt one, Fireball another, Peacekeeper, and then you have six power on board. Uh, you're dead. <laughs> you're still dead no matter what. We just got a word, by the way, that um, Orange beats Hoida 3-0. So the Shaman and the Dreadseek deck are out oh. of the tournament, unfortunately. Oh, why do you play new deck when you can play Petra? <laughs> That's right. You can play Patron. You can also just play uh, Fireballs and Frostbolts and have all the damage in the world. Yeah. But uh, it won't really matter at all. So, you know, Sansigma tried his best to stay alive, but he's dead. So that's going to be a 1-1 score. And the Patron Warrior's out of the way. We need to... We, we should call it yeah. a very fun game. Interactive fun game. That was very interactive. Yes. Like, you saw that? The, the Spell Slinger created mm -hmm. the Power of the Wild, and we got to see a unique yeah. buff that we don't get to see Generally, all the time. Generally, it's that Sifkai helped him to win. I'm waiting for, um, like, weird stuff like Spell Slinger, and then, like, the Enifin Can Happen card, and then you just revive, mm -hmm. like, a board of Murlocs. Like, that, that kind of stuff is really funny to see. Yeah, I think anything is awesome. Probably can be the new Doctor Six. Every 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 fin is awesome, mm -hmm. but that's I, seven mana. How can that be a Doctor Six? It can reduce the mana. Yeah, but why would you? But why is it a Doctor Six? What I mean is that it can be the ca one card that can carry the whole deck. Oh god, yeah. I, um, Eloise is telling me that she thinks any fin is awesome is uh, one of the best cards in in League of Explorers. Is that your favorite card? Mm -hmm. Your number one card? Yes. It is your lock and load of the of the set. Excuse me, lock and load <laughs> is Raynard. Raynard. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. At least I'm not Raynard. I, re I remember. I remember that now. Thank you for clarifying. Even though I lost, even though oh, I have, I have got camp. no cam, <laughs> I've got no girlfriend, no man. <laughs> but at least I'm not Raynard. Feels good, man. Feels real good, man. Well, you know, to be fair, uh, you placed as well as Raynard would have at this time. So don't don't feel too bad about yourself. Oh. 
Hamlock versus Control Warrior. This matchup is often debated about who is favored and who is not. Uh, mm -hmm. These days, it feels like a lot of people lean towards Control Warrior, but with TGT coming out, we haven't actually seen too much of this matchup. Um, so how do cards like Bash and Jessica Trueheart change the matchup what here, in your opinion? No. Mm, I think it depends on if the Void Color pull out Draxas. Draxas is very important in this matchup. And, uh, well, it matters like 30%, and the other, like, 50% depends on if the Warrior can kill the first big threat from the Handlock. And what about the other 20%? <laughs> 30 plus 50 is oh. 80, Eloise. We'll oh, see if everybody oh, gets 20%. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay. That's okay. We don't really need math. Focus, focus on the game. <laughs> you don't need to be, uh, be good at math to play Hearthstone, thankfully. In this case, we have the turn four mountain giant, but with the fact that Acolyte's out there, it's really scary to just let Acolyte draw cards and mm -hmm. then execute at the very end. So, like, cool Taskmaster, yes. trade in, and then execute. Um, so, maybe you feel like you want a Dark Bomb instead. Um, if you Dark Bomb, then it'd probably be too slow, I think. I mean, it's not, it's not a fast matchup by any means. The only way it can be fast is if you play a turn four threat and then he doesn't answer it and then you just keep smashing face. Why do you... Why, why do you... Mm, this, this, is, this is not Control Warrior. Huh? You thought this is oh, Control oops, Warrior. Right, Come right, on. Sorry. I, you I discussed totally, with me about I, Control Warrior versus Hanlock. I was, I was testing you to see if you were paying attention and you passed. Congrats. Oh... Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just zoned out. I, was, I just saw Warrior versus Handlock for some reason. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the point still stands. Uh, Handlock is in a very interesting spot these days because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't bring it to the tournament. Well, I don't think Patron is winnable. It used to be like a Warsong Commander was the way to kill it um, mm -hmm. because you would charge down your opponent. Yes. Yeah. Like but for nowadays, well... The matchup I practice most, most of the time, if I win, I win rely on the patron. If the handlock cannot kill my patron spam, then I win. That is the mo yeah. most of the time. But Sivka's got Hellfire and Shadow Flame. Those are yes. two ways to deal with patron. <laughs> except Hellfire can't kill a Power of the Wild patron. But good news is that Surrender's got weapon and he's got even more card draw. Yeah, and now that he has Accolades on board, the Battle Rage is um, mm -hmm. also live. This is pretty annoying. Yeah, do you think he wants to taunt a Watcher? Because next turn he probably wants to play Emperor anyways, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So he wants at least some some board, like a Sun Fury to at least kill a um, Accolade or something. He's got two... two I think tapping into a card is still pretty good, though. Oh. <laughs> Gara is apparently running away with the trophy. Whoa, why you scammed the tournament? No, <laughs> well, why is it me? What? Just, us? That's a completely racist, though, Louise. Just because I am of Asian descent and I wear glasses. Don't do this to, to the tournament. <laughs> Uh, I think you still play the Emperor Thorson, even though you know it's going to die. It, it's a really full hand of reduction here. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that cards like Dark Bomb for one is just so insanely powerful tempo-wise. How about he draw one card first, not use the Inner Rage to see what's in there. He probably don't want that much armor, so I don't think he will play the armor smith. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's I'm, I'm see down. what he can draw first. I'm down. Yeah, because he will use the Despite anyways. Yep, but you smack it and then you Battle Rage, right? Wait, do you overdraw? No, you should be fine. So you smack mm -hmm. that, and then you battle rage, and then you trade in, assuming you don't need anything else. You want a fourth Whoa. card. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, he'll be at nine, and then he picks up another one, ten, and he plays Armorsmith. But but if the handlock plays a massive AOE and clear the board, then he probably get overdraw. Will he? Um, no, because he plays Dread Corsair here. Okay. Right? So he should be fine. Yeah, he's thinking about that. 
And he doesn't choose to attack the face, does he? Yes, no. He doesn't want to put him down to 16, because mm -hmm. with the Molten Giant reduction, that would be a playable Molten. Next turn, he can play a Dark Shark Boom. Uh, yes, he can. Although, this is where things start getting crazy, because Sun Fury Protectors, for one, just allow really big tempo swings. Um, yeah. Trying to figure out, like, what's his best move. I was thinking something with Void Collar, perhaps. Like, Void Collar Taunt Up. And it gives you room to tap. He probably is thinking about clearing the board. It almost feels unlikely that you'll be able to clear the board very efficiently. So if you just taunt up this way, it, it gives you ability to have multiple demons come out. Like if you get pull out Doom Guard or Draxus or even Malganus, it's pretty effective. Yeah, they are all very good target to taunt yeah. up. And the, the the best part, sorry, I didn't finish that thought. The best part is that they're behind another taunt um, for now. Like, you know, yeah. like you have to kind of go through the Ancient Watcher, but if you do that, you damage your own minions, and so the trades get better. Do you want to go for Patron Flood, or do you want to set up Dr. Boom? I think he'd play Dr. Boom first, and to see if Dr. Boom can, um, can deal with this board, the Boom Bots, and waste some of the answers from... Handlock. Oh, Draxus comes out, and you're saying that this is one of the key cards to try and uh, really. A make control sure. warrior. Yeah, if you let me finish Excuse my sentence, me. you were mentioning that this is one of the key cards. Can you please figure out control. what kind of class we're facing <laughs> first before you even I'm cast? I'm just keeping you on your toes, Eloise. Oh my god. <laughs> How you're, can you, you be so professional? <laughs> you were looking a little sleepy <sighs> over there, so. I was just trying to make sure you're paying attention. Yeah, I just yeah. woke up from ta Chinese time zone. Yeah. In the midnight of Europe. Yeah. Well, uh, the Hellfire here is something that allows him to clear with the Mortal Coil. Oh, unfortunately taking a little too much damage on Jaraxxus. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, but it's not preferable. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it goes to face, then it's pr perfect. Because he's got a taunt, he's got Molten. He, he's not afraid of... Oh, well, that's that's convenient. <laughs> Tap into Dark Ball <laughs> for exact mana. Oh, Surrender. Poor boy. And now this Draxus will stay on the board. And it'll be the official patron slayer. Yeah. It'll kill every patron out there. So no. what you do here? Is no, he already seen uh, Hellfire. He probably would play Patron. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the Patrons, you can go Patron, in a Rage, Whirlwind. That gives you four Patrons, but that costs six mana. Uh, with that remaining two, you can either play um, Unstable Gold behind it for more Patron Flood, or you can set up an armor smith to gain some armor. I'm not sure if I like that. Maybe you play Deathbite because you can slow play it a little bit. I think with this hand, he can spam a patron this turn first and to see if there's there's other answers from, oh, from Hanlock. And next sure. turn, he can spam another patron. Sure. If you want. Do you like playing armor smith to just gain a bunch of armor as well? I'm not sure how in, how important the armor is, but maybe it is. maybe because you know your opponent plays Doom Guards and other cards like that, you have to be careful about your life. Mm, yeah. Because, well, next turn he probably play on Stable Go instead of Armor Smith, anyways. Okay, well, he's just going for it for now. I mean, he doesn't really have much of a choice. Yes. But it's not going to work out too great. Let's see. Um, How oh, long? He's one mana off of, like, insane play. Like, if he was able to play Molten, Heal Bot, and then Shadow Flame the Heal Bot, that would have been <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yeah, very unlucky with the Boombot. Yeah, the Boombot's hitting the face instead would have been pretty nuts. Mm -hmm. But this hand is, is not bad itself. I think he can sacrifice the the drugs as if he wants. Just hit the face, Shadow Flame it? Mm -hmm. Shadow Flame, um, you have six more mana, so you can still life tap and do something like play the Giant and Drake. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you can't. Uh, he probably would play Taunt because he will be on very low health. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I forgot that Molten's still one mana here. Yeah. Okay, so Taunt instead. Just take it a little bit here, day by day. 
Oh, he wants to taunt the two targets. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't want to give any more armor too. So this is a really powerful push to just end the game with. I think this is lethal next turn, right? Mm -hmm. He's setting up for lethal. Well, Eight, twelve, seven. No, it'd be one off. <laughs> with the execute. <laughs> huh. It's not. Well, I, I was actually curious because I thought I was like, why did he silence the armor smith and go all the way through that trouble? But um, it could be that he's scared of Gromash mm. potentially lethaling him, but that. Doesn't really stop him. He haven't got any other stuff to silence. The pe the warrior already played to acolyte. Well, shredder and unstable ghouls and sludge belchers. Oh, they are, they and, are like the nothing for him. Look. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Just just bringing up interesting discussion points. Mm, yes. In my opinion. Oh, interesting. To, to the average pleb. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what what would you do here? Stan Sivka uh, already has dealt with the patrons, but he used both probably, Shadow Flame. I probably would play weapon, yeah, hit the two. And then play the Belcher, right? Because then afterwards you can try to go for Patron Flood one more time. Like yeah. if the 8-8 eight eight hits the 3-5, then you can kill that one more time mm -hmm. and see if you can go for one more Patron Flood. That is, the, this is his only chance. I don't uh, know if he. I don't know if he play Ragnaros beside Gromash. Some patron will play that. I don't believe I saw it, but um, I will admit that I, I had one eye on the games and I was kind of going through other stuff, like playing some of the, the content mm -hmm. uh, of League of Explorers. It's, I wonder how safe Stan Sitka feels uh, before he plays Healbot. I guess he doesn't feel the most safe right now. He just wants to be really careful against Gromash shenanigans. At 12 health, that is the money spot with Cool Taskmaster. Yes. And there is the Gromash. And he has enough damage for Lethal next turn. Uh, for Stan Sivka or for Stan For Stan Sivka. Well, if he executes this giant, mm -hmm. there will be... There will be 9-14 damage next turn. So not quite if he executes, which almost certainly he will. And he will make some patron play on stable goal. That will cost seven mana. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's really strong um, to get like a couple patrons just hidden behind the unstable goal. Mm -hmm. He probably is also thinking about playing Gromash. Nah, you save Gromash for uh -huh. the following turns. Yeah. I think it's patron time. Sender really taking his time, though. I mean, this is a, an important game. If he wins this game somehow, he wins the series and moves on. Oh, sorry, it's 1-1. My bad. I was looking at the uh, band versus rip. So for some reason, I took that as a 2-1 score. A little confusing there. So, um... Yeah, this is a very important match. If the patron can yeah. win, then it will be so easy for, for next... Next I was game. yeah for, against the paladin for sure. I was thinking, yeah. uh, does he have any more AOE clear? Usually one Hellfire and one Shadow Flame. Do they run any more of those? Maybe two Hellfire. Maybe two Hellfires. Mm -hmm. Depends on what what he want he expect from this handlock. But he's defensive, so probably less AOE. <laughs> You think so? Like, do you think Stan Sivka is greedier? Uh, yeah. Like life coach, from what I know, life coach mm, like to play only one Hellfire, one Shadow Flame. Yeah, I think life coach is just very weird with the one ofs. He likes to play like one of AOEs, and he likes to play one Iron Beak Owl. And a lot of other people just feel like that's that's crazy. I like, think one Silence makes sense because Silence is mostly for face decks. For control, Dex is only for Sylvanas. There's yep. nothing else that Handlock is afraid of. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, um, they have enough to deal with it with through minions and stuff. But I mean, Life Coach was even playing like Siphon Soul at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. But if Stasivka win this time, then Surrender still have chance for next match. Because Handlock is like only counters Patron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, well, the Malganis comes down, and that's not very pretty sight for uh, Surrender here. Yes, but he has some. Ch he still has some chance. 
Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really looking at what his best options here are. And it could be just like taking a slower approach, like playing the Shredder, mm -hmm. Fire War Axe. Hellbolt. This is the second Hellbolt. And then the Doom Guard. It's pitching two of the cards that doesn't really need. Mm -hmm. Is he just going to go face? I like it. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, no matter if he have the third execute or not, he still have Lisa. But now I wonder if, like, maybe this is what the Warrior can actually stabilize with, um... Can he stabilize here? Mm, he or is he cool dead? Cool task. Cool task, and then Tread, he trades shred, two of them. Shred. Yeah, he, he still is out of lethal range. Yeah, if he don't use his face. This is pretty this is pretty intense. Mm -hmm. And he can still have one one patron left. Sure, sounds good to me. So you attack first, get as much armor as possible. Oh. Unless uh, if he attack, maybe he will die. Oh, okay. So he's going to trade the last patron in here. There's a 3-3. How do you die from 11 health against 5? If he used face. Right, right. If he's at, he uses face, he'd be at 8. 8, yeah. So that is a little bit too risky. A little bit. He's like calculating the odds because he knows uh -huh. the opponent has one card left. Uh -huh. And he ends up trading. Just to be super duper safe. I don't mind. Belcher is Belcher. pretty good. And he can also bet on Handlock having got the damage because Handlock just discarded two cards from Doomguard. Right, and one of them was Mountain Giant, so another threat. But yes. Belcher is still me pretty meaningful. Yeah, Belcher is pretty <laughs> big. It's a pretty big minion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can take all the size you can get at this stage of the game. Oh, he can draw some cards now. He would draw two cards at least. Three. Three cards. Oh, right, you kill the Belcher and then uh, you have the one two. Yes. You have to explain some of these things, Eloise, because not everyone's as oh. elite and smart as you are. Oh, you are one, one of those. Yes, please explain things for us common folks. Okay, makes sense. The less people who play Hearthstone 24-7 hours sense. a day. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I know you play Overwatch like 26 hours a day. Yes, that, that is literally possible and oh. exactly what happens. Why are you still playing Hearthstone? Oh, you don't look like you're still playing Hearthstone. You, you, can, you cannot even tell the difference on control <laughs> work and patient <laughs> work. Come on. It's really hard, man. Now, you know, I'm just, I'm just struggling, just a little small-time caster like me, just trying to... I, I, I oh. dabble in Hearthstone once in a while. Oh, sm what, 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 what is that small-time casual? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Okay, I learned some new English. Yeah. Well, uh, no matter what uh, the the handlock does here, he needs like Shadow Flame or Hellfire number two. Twilight Drake's not it. He can draw a card. He can draw a card in multiple ways. He can yeah, Mortal Coil. Yeah, probably he wants to kill Did you know, Eloise, that Mortal Coil hits a one health minion, it draws a card, not only killing it. Oh, thank you. I learned that the other day. Well, that's a great knowledge. <laughs> Uh, this is great. I think I think we're providing a very educational commentary. Uh, yes, I guess. Killing off the Father Berserker first, 
trying to limit the damage. It's, he's still not dead on board, which is the most important thing. Killing off, I guess the armor count doesn't really matter. He's not going to be bursting. Eight on board. Do Does, you uh, do you want to tap? Mm, you get really close to fatigue. Yeah, we already seen Gromash. And you want to play both of those threats, quote unquote. I put I, those, those aren't really threats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're they're just minions at this point. Yeah. This game has basically turned to like a value game, like Arena. Uh, slam. Like what? What? What is? How many cars does Surrender have left? Because we know it's two. around six or seven or eight. Mm. That kind of number. Seven? Is that seven? Seven. Mm. Uh, so he's got. He's missing like. Like his other whirlwind and inner rages and stuff like. Yeah, that. Yeah, he already used his Doctor Boom and Grandma. <laughs> yeah. How many shredders have he has he used? Because like those I powerful think memes. Two. Because we actually he's used two because he has a shrinkmeister here. Yeah, the first the first shredder we see a new card from it. What? He's seven or six or seven cards. He's at his second to last card. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's that's really right. close to the finish. I mean, yeah. if if he runs out of threats, this is it. Like if Doomsayer comes out of here, Warrior probably can't win um. because Handlock probably still has one more minion. Oh boy. I know, at least Hanlock still have a Argus. <laughs> that's a very good yeah, minion. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's got one Argus. Uh, yeah. And he already uses big game here. He can't shut down this frothing very easily. Dude, Surrender might beat Hanlock with new patron. Whoa, what did I say? No! Whoa, what? Is this? what? That is Double terrible. Argus! I think that, that's the game. You just like defenders one, and then you just kill off. Oh, could no. Just whiffed. I'm back to back defender of Argus. Wow. <laughs> this order of the deck is weird. <laughs> yeah. Like two Argus at both bottom. <laughs> yeah, which if he was able to plop that down on anything else earlier, it would yeah. have been much more problematic. Like defender of Argus onto like uh, uh, Ancient Watcher that he uh -huh. ended up pitching, or even like Doom Guards and stuff and like forced him to attack into it. Yeah. Tough stuff. <laughs> Wow. Well, Stan Sifka is going to go to his Paladin deck, but this Paladin is very weak against the Patron these days, right? And yeah. even more weak to um, some of the stuff that's been put into it, like the Whirlwinds. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. Like all the secrets that you play, and you play very aggressively with Secret Creeper, mm -hmm. you're going to go for a very early game board, as opposed to like Zombie Chow. And we can say that Stan Sifka run with Belcher. I suppose that this is the version that might with Belcher and uh, Zombie Chow, which is not very... Uh, you think uh, so? Very, uh, yeah, this might be a very defens defensive version of... But he has Secret Keeper. Isn't Secret Keeper naturally more aggressive? Like, you play yeah, Zombie Chow or Secret Keeper. This version, com compared to other versions of Secret Paladin, is more defensive. It's good in mirror matchup, but it's <laughs> absolutely no good against Patron. Well, sure, but I don't know how often you're accounting for Patron specifically. I think people are just talking about Warrior in general, or Paladin in general, whether mid-range or secrets. In this case, look, he's got Zombie Chow, you're right. Two, three. Turn one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. What? I'm trying to help you. Sounds oh, smart. Oh, but, well, I, I, I think I know what this card called. Is that my English better than yours? It's called a Secret, it's secret Keeper, but I'm saying it's like a Zombie Chow. Oh, okay. But even better, it doesn't even heal your opponent for five. Mm. What do you even do? Armorsmith? Yeah, Armorsmith. Oh. Yeah, the problem is um, you, you don't have a weapon, so you need to fight back for it. That yeah. is Redemption, by the way, and he's got two of them. Uh, with Secret Keeper, you probably play a package of seven or eight secrets as opposed to the the lower ones, like five or six. Mm -hmm. And you do it because you want a Secret Keeper to get many buffs. Um, and as a result, Mysterious Challenger coming out twice really thins out the deck. So, uh, I mean... I think he wants to draw a card. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think Acolyte here... He needs a weapon. If he cannot get a weapon now to kill the... the miss... Well, whatever. <laughs> then he will be wrecked. Oh, the Secret Keeper. Yes. You secret. don't actually know the name. You're yelling at me as if I, I'm supposed to know it and you do. 
Wow. Wow. Hypocrisy. Wow. Do you attack with this armor smith? You're afraid of noble sacrifice and avenge, right? Uh, don't want to buff it. If noble sacrifice absorbs it, this thing ends up becoming yeah, a. Th this is very six, obvious. Uh, noble sacrifice. I mean, it, it's obvious um, because he didn't hero power, right? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise. Well, yeah. If he hero power, then it's avenge. But he didn't hero power, but he he hit with. Right, and we know it's not competitive spirit, and it's not redemption or not repentance. So, but he does attack into it, and it's not avenge. Ends up being redemption. And Redemption literally becomes just a 2-1. Which is very good. I mean, not bad. It keeps your Secret Keeper alive. Uh, I think it's like above the average of what a Paladin can expect from a... From a Secret? Yes. What is the average? 1-1 one, one value? Mm -hmm. uh, the average is like just kind of mess up what the patrons think about the, the, net, the strategy. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... You look at the situation, and Secret Keeper is starting to get to Undertaker levels of, like, powerful. It's going to become a 4-4, four, four, yeah. a 5-5 five, five as the game develops, and you don't have Execute to kill it. And that's going to rack up so much damage. Already has done, what, 5 damage? And next turn it'll do 8, mm -hmm. 12, like, 12 if it gets buffed again. So. But so far, we still see Patron is running on very high health, and he's got weapon now. So I think Patron still have the chance. He's oh, got yeah, Whirlwind, he's got everything for oh, Master for Battle. Yeah, you're right. He's got a lot of tools. Yeah, now he need an Execute for for Dr. Six. Or maybe just the Seeker Keeper from getting too out of control. We'll see. We'll maybe see. a Patron. If he, he's got a Patron, this game end here, I will tell you. Okay. Mm. Well, not, not immediately because he still needs a little bit more yeah. mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, I, I definitely am in that camp for sure. But he needs to Ooh. draw it like in one or two turns before it run out yeah. of control. Yeah, that far, second fire war axe not really that helpful because he already has a weapon. Yeah. Imagine if that was a blade flurry. It's though. okay. He can still have one one more turn to draw it and play it next turn. Turn six, sure. like yeah. patron in the rage and whirlwind, very beautiful. Yeah. It's a gorgeous play. But he probably would uh, use his inner rage now because he really wants to kill the 3-3. Three, three. Do you feel comfortable at all playing Unstable Ghoul instead and like stalling out with Fiery War Axe? I don't like it because Unstable Ghoul is like typically for for Master for Battle and Whirlwind is like a kind of um, a thing to trigger the patron. Okay, fair enough. You know I play Secret Padding a lot. Uh, oh, she admitted it! I didn't want to say anything, but... Oh. Yeah. Well, at least, at least I don't play Hunter. I don't know how to swark. I don't know if you're up to date on the, the recent memeology, but people hate Secret Paladin more than Hunter these days. In fact, oh. it was not so long ago where because the, the tournament meta was so refined with Druid, Patron, and Handlock, people were kind of cheering for Hunter at that point. They were like, wow, we see a Hunter. That's so different. Oh, yeah, they're cheering for my Hunter. I know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh but, uh, that you know, makes sense. In a tournament like last year, standing Hunter makes a lot of sense. Oh, he still haven't got paid. Yeah, you said weapons, right? That's the key to win. Yeah, he so, have, uh, yeah. You haven't draw battle rage. He did draw battle rage, didn't he? Didn't he use it? Or is that a different game? Maybe that was the previous game. Come on. Well, uh, he's not really going to do anything. He's still waiting on patrons. Oh, he has to play it. And this is the turn for Mysterious Challenger, which... Can he do uh, it? No. But he still has some powerful secrets. Like, redemption on any of these targets is really good. Mm -hmm. I think it's, this version of Secret Padding is very slow. But the patron has really bad draw. So it, it already given Stemsica a lot of chance. Sure. And Stan is putting on some real pressure to just end the game. Uh, I mean, realistically, even though he has Tyrion, he might not even need Tyrion. Mm -hmm. In fact, do you think he just plays like Peacekeeper and just tries to push for the win? Yeah, of course. He needs to have the tempo. 
And that is nine power on board with potential like consecration or true silver. Oh man. Oh. That is wow. awkward. You know, you can always um, try to fish for Doomsayer stuff, but that's yeah, always uh, very, very desperate. The evil always win. Uh, evil? Yeah. What do you mean? You, you just said people don't like U the Uther fatality. represents good. Gar Garrosh, or oh. tries to destroy everything in the okay. Warcraft universe. You know this. I you mean, play World of Warcraft. I you're, don't like You're a WoW nerd. Either. I don't even know anything in WoW. <laughs> you literally had to explain who Tarande is to me. I had no clue who she was. Oh, who is Tarande? <laughs> I'm wow. kidding. Tarande is. All right. Well, Avenge if it lands on the Shredder. Okay. Well, now. What it, is it, this play? Well, he was. It, it's a, it's a desperation hit. I, I thought would he was rather. Doomsayer. I would rather him play Gromosh and Whirlwind. Oh, uh, he can't Gromosh, so he's at seven minutes. Oh yeah. So. Wow! Mail House Mana Storm! GG. Oh. I think that's just the, every indication that this game has gone completely wrong for Surrender. And <sighs> the Paladin beating the Warrior means Paladin plays Druid, which yeah. is such a big deal. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Mysterious Challenger off the top. I think he's played so many secrets though that. Oh, just kidding. Wait, literally can play all five secrets. Alright. Sick. <laughs> Well, you got full, full version of Christmas tree, right? <laughs> the repentance on the Gromosh. It's so Aww. funny that, you know, Chinese community call this kind of secret paladin. It's called the one true king of 1,000 Buddha. Because the five secret on his head looks like a Buddha's head. Oh, you know? gotcha. The one true king of 1,000 Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me like that's supposed to be really funny, but it's, it's, just, a, it's just a, oh, cool. Cool fact. Like something I'd read on a Snapple cap. Oh, you don't think it's funny? I, the, the, humor, the, humor is, the humor is lost on me. How can, how can Christmas <laughs> tree be funny? Uh. Because it's, it's, it's like people don't think about it, but then it's like when you, when it's, a, it's a funny analogy. It's like, oh yeah, this is kind of like a Christmas tree because it just lights up. Oh. Oh. It's, it's hilarious, trust me, Eloise. Oh. You're just, you just don't have a sense of humor. It's okay, there's no Christa Christmas tree in China. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we are, we are pretty not? civilized. Wh what? <laughs> are you hating on Christmas? <laughs> the, mo the most free country, the free, oh. most free holiday in the world? Focus on the game. What? How do you hate on Christmas? <laughs> Why? You hate democracy. Uh. All right. You are, no, you are no longer okay. welcome in my country. See, this is street. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I have eyes. I can see. <laughs> oh, I'm teaching you in case right. you mess up the <laughs> patron with control. So, so how, again. How, is, how is Ramp Druid versus uh, uh, Secrets Paladin these days? Mm. Mm, tell me. Uh, it's like mm, 43.218 <laughs> win rate or uh, something. Mm. Gotcha. Well, you would know because you played a bunch of Secrets Paladin. Oh, I also play. I also play control Don't talk to me. You, play, you are the worst type of human. You play secret paladin. You hate Christmas. Excuse me, I don't play small counter. And you bully people because of the color of their hair. You are evil. Oh, you, I don't. You, I never wreck people with the color of the hair. I only wreck people by the. Kappa mm, mm? pride. Uh. <laughs> mm, uh it's okay, we'll, uh, we'll work on the delivery of that one, but I know what you meant. Oh. And screw you, by the way, that's kind of mean. Anyways. Do you think he will innervate? Uh, yeah, think? you know, innervate here feels really good to stop. Um, um, you can, like, play knife jug. You can play uh, innervate first and then trade afterwards. Yeah. Oh, wow, I don't like trade. <laughs> the, the point of trade of cl the cloud is just, you like not leaving to trade. Knife juggler, though? If he trades, then he might play the. Shade next turn, save the innervate next next turn for uh, Dread of the Cloud or Ancient of Lore. Mm. Mm. Okay. Makes sense. I can, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense. It's just I'm afraid of things like um, like muster for battle or other things that really. Yeah, so now, now you have to trade. Now you have to trade for yeah. sure. And next turn he can innervate Dread of the Cloud. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what? So, uh... <laughs> what, what, what does he play next turn? 
Oh, he's going to clearly hero power at least. Yeah, well, he will top deck something. He, he will top deck a uh, swipe for the muscle for battle. And this is the confidence of being a control druid player. Yeah, mm. you know, and, <laughs> you know, surrender also, uh, I mean, with, th with this type of play, it's a very strong statement to San Sifka, so he's going to be really afraid of. Right? Yeah, he, he probably him. plays secret this turn to scare the control druid player. <laughs> You know, the funny thing about Repentance is that it might land on Drew the Claw, which is pretty good. Having Repentance be Hunter's Mark is one of the best things you can do in this matchup. Mm -hmm. But what do you do? If you play the Peacekeeper... Oh, he wants to kill the Danazas of... Mm. Aspirant. Or oh, asp thank you. Or thank Aspirant. You. Thank you. It is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> because that's what freedom is, Eloise. It's about loving Christmas oh. and saying words the way you want it to. Oh, Lewis. okay. <laughs> Throw Kappa Pride down. <laughs> uh, well, this is not the turn that he wanted. He passed on turn four. You know, yeah. Right? And uh, the Drew of the Claw here, number two, was not very strong at all. Um, but the Darnassus Aspirin stays alive, and the worst part of the curve is over. So mm -hmm. if this Darnassus Aspirin dies, Surrender can play another Drew of the Claw. So mm -hmm. in, in, in essence... Um, the, that Darnassus Aspirin was very successful in early game ramp. Uh, well, I was thinking if Stansifka plays any stronger play last turn, and the Druid will get wrecked. You mean the Repentance, or what? Mm. What, what was, what was he, the strongest he, play? He, Shredder is usually the strongest play. Choose over champion. Um, oh, you mean, you mean the expectation of it. You're um, right, you're right. Okay, I thought you meant um, like what he actually could do. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, Savage War does um, provide an ability to kill the Shredder because it, it's eight attack. It's mm -hmm. a lot. Um, it depends on how he judged this secret. Gotcha. So he sees that it's not Noble Sacrifice. Uh, probably a revive. Yeah, yeah, probably Redemption. We know it's Repentance. Um, so if he plays Drew the Claw or Shade next Ram, it will be down to one health. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And char whoa. if he charges this, then Repentance... Oh, he attacked before seeing the secret. Oh, I like this play. That was really cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's like, well, I'm going to charge this anyway, which is vulnerable. Uh, yeah. Make my opponent have something to deal with it. Yeah, he will be wrecked. By Mustafer battle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty insane. What about, what about uh, just playing the Mysterious Challenger and then even maybe killing the 1-3 so that the 4-1 is in trouble? I think he definitely don't want the one three to trigger the noble sacrifice from the mysterious challenger. Plus, you deny seven mana from your opponent. Mm. The only thing that's really painful is that you're wasting eight damage. <laughs> it's it's like an eight three. Yeah. Don't you want you want you want to hit the face? But I, I do like killing the Darnassus Aspirin as bad as it is for rushing yeah. damage wise. Playing against Dread is about board control. Health is not important. Yeah, I agree. So, swipe gets drawn. Uh, I don't know how helpful that is. You hero power, it, you kill the 2-1, it comes back, you swipe the 8-2. And he oh, cannot so play Savage Draw and swipe together at one turn. Yeah, imagine, it would be perfect lined up with Savage Draw but, mm -hmm. and swipe, but it's not, it's not available to him, unfortunately. So hero power down first. Do you think he even wants to trigger this secret? Probably not, but the problem is if you leave it up, then these minions become even stronger with your competitive spirit. Yeah, and he just like passed a whole oh. Whoa. So now he has, if he doesn't swipe and trade into this uh, eight health mysterious challenger, a lot of a lot's gonna happen. A lot of damage. Mm -hmm. It's uh nine seventeen. 19, 22, just from competitive spirit triggering next He time. has to do it. Yeah, he has to swipe. Has, whoa. Wow, he's going to go for Force of Nature Savage Roar potential. Mm -hmm. Dude, that is so bald. He's going to want to, he wants to encourage his opponent to trade. Mm, he has one turn chance. I think so. He has to draw specifically Force of Nature and innervate in the next two turns. He says this game is so desperate and bad that I have to go for a very aggressive stance. Let's see how Stan Sivka think about this play. 
I think he... <laughs> he's, he. I mean, he's now that he drew Belcher, he can take his time, right? Yeah. He can just kill can this 4-1. Slow. He can play slow now. Right. And he's not only does he have Belcher, but he has Redemption, so if <laughs> the Belcher dies for some reason to force the nature of Savage War, uh, he would also just get another Belcher 3-1. Yeah. So uh, he is in a pristine position. That's your word of the day. Oh, can I say it again? And, and you know what? That was free. I didn't charge you for it at all. Oh, you drew Force of Nature. Look at that. Oh. Okay. Well, too little, too late. Uh, like, he needed to be way ahead on board in order to do something, to be able to leverage this Force of Nature Savage War. But now, now he is in danger of even dying. Like, next turn. He's got 17 damage on the opposing side of the board. And generating three points of damage isn't very hard for this Paladin deck mm -hmm. if you can just get another Blessing of Kings or a Truce Over Champion or something. Yeah, so the most important thing about this matchup, I think, is if the Dread can deal with the first tr uh, Secret Champion. Mysterious Mysteri champ. Mysterious champ. Uh, thank mysterious you, challenger, thank yeah. you. Well, we all have names for that card. Some, uh, some more ah, vulgar and some more polite. Oh, let's just call it Doctor Six. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's four points of damage needed to end the game. Stan Sifka just needs to find some way, whether it's Bust of Kings or True Silver. Doctor Boom is also really powerful, especially if you combine it with Redemption. Mm -hmm. It is pretty insane in the membrane. Does. Without that redemption, did Surrender have lethal potential with uh, an Innervate draw? I think he did. Yes. If <laughs> if he didn't have redemption, he, he, he would actually be able to go for exactly 12 but damage. If it's not redemption, he probably... Uh, no go, nope. uh, noble no, sacrifice. both Noble Sacrifice yes, are, are all gone. He knows exactly what this is. Mm. He's seen almost every... Se this is literally the last secret in the yeah. deck, I think. Oh. Please be innervate just for like the, don't. the irony of it. Oh. Oh. Well, crap. Now you big game hunter the 10 8 and it comes back as a 6 1. Oh, <laughs> There's yeah. There's nothing else that you can do about it. it sounds like a very good play. That is it. Stan Sifka wins the series 3 to 2. Mm -hmm. And it's going to move on to the round of 16 in C Story Cup 4. Yeah. Temple Major and Hanlock winning the game. That's right. And you know, it was a very weird series. You know, the patron uh, being able to take that win and then the handlock, uh, you know, just kind of fizzling out there. But in the yeah. end, very cool stuff overall. Like, Stan, mm -hmm. looks like Surrender was in a position to win the series. You said that was like, oh, it was such an important win. But then the Paladin beat the patron. Justice are done. Oh, justice needs retribution. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I have. I thought you were quoting uh, an Overwatch character <laughs> person. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not how the line Whoa. goes. Um, so yeah. So San Sifka is the winner. We're gonna do a quick interview with him. We're running short on time. It is <laughs> almost 2 a.m. in the morning. So thanks so much for tuning in. So Hello. Sifka, how was that series for you, man? That was. It felt like a little weird with how things. It was out. really weird, yeah, because in the second game, oh, in the third game, I have a pure counter to his patron barrier. So yeah. And I lost, so <laughs> yeah. it was so bad for me. I, after this, I was like big underdog in the matchup because the right. Paladin is isn't very good against against uh, the patrons the because warrior, it's right. nature counter to Paladin. So mm -hmm. I was like, I, I have decent chance obviously. Like you can have a good curve or whatever, but it was still big underdog. But I managed to win back, and then I had a comfortable matchup against Droid. So. Yeah, it seemed to work out okay, even though there's some weird like it didn't exactly get to the like I expect that I like to. it's gonna be exact opposite. Like, I'm right. gonna win game three and then lose game four against the Druid and then I will win against against sure, sure. Druid the Paladin. But yeah, uh, you know I, we we don't really get to see you much in the the public sphere outside of tournaments. Um, in fact, you don't really. Uh, you're like you, you don't do a lot of like card reviews, and you don't do a lot of like podcast stuff. Um, how, how do you feel about the, like you know Hearthstone the way it is? You know, a lot of people talk about Secrets Paladin, or they talk about League of Explorers. Do you have mm -hmm. any like opinions on the new cards or the car or the current meta game at all? Yeah, about like stuff? the current meta game is kind of I kind of like current meta game. Like the Secret Paladin is obviously a deck to beat. It's the best deck, and you have to have it in mind. Like on the ladder, it's the most played deck, and like. In this format, it's the most dangerous deck, so you need to have a plan against it. You should either ban it or be incredibly ready. So, yeah, that's how it is at the moment. And 
I'm not sure if it's going to change, like, to be honest, but we will see it. So you think it's uh, not good for people to leave Paladin open, right? If you're talking about, well, like, it's the strongest well, deck in the format. You can have it open, but you need to really be ready. Because, for example, if you have only one counter deck to Paladin, and then they ban your this deck, so then you can really struggle. So sure, sure. You just need to be ready. Okay, fair enough. I I've asked him a lot of questions. Do you have anything you want to ask him? Good question. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Okay, so we All are right. here. Well, that okay. was her question. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, and uh, um, you're through to round 16. Yeah, good luck oh. tomorrow for them. All right. Go. Oh, no, don't remind me. I have to oh. play. Yeah, you will I play. play. Uh, we are looking for Please a for it. Cat. I'm, actually banning, <laughs> I'm actually banning everybody from casting that match tomorrow. <laughs> don't no cry, you You are lose. certainly not casting that tomorrow. <laughs> everyone wants to cast Absolutely it because not. everyone's looking for a for it. Absolutely not. I have been extra nice to every player at this tournament today for that <laughs> oh. reason. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, well... So. Um, uh, congratulations, yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, we have, I think, one more it. match. Uh, it is the decider match here at the, the Kreffeld Studios. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back. You're watching C-Story Cup number four.